Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Father, we come before your word tonight with expectancy. We open our hearts, we open our ears, open our eyes to heaven, to receive revelation from heaven. Words that move heaven on the earth. Ah, thank you, sir. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's open our Bibles once again tonight to 1 Timothy chapter 6. We'll read that 12th verse again. First Timothy 6, 12, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto you are also called and have professed a good profession before many witnesses. Fight the good fight of faith. Now we need to know what the enemy of faith is if we're going to fight a fight, we need to know who the enemy is. Amen. Amen. So uh, we, we talked about the fact that uh, this fight is about laying hold on eternal life. The Greek word translated eternal life is zoe, Mm Z-O-E. It literally translated means the life of God. It is the, it's it's the part of God that makes God, God. Now, quote John 3.16 with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Should not perish, but have everlasting life. Should not perish, but have so That's interesting, isn't it? Jesus said, I came that you might have Zoe and have it more abundantly. Now, let's go to John 6, 63, please. Here again, Jesus is speaking. John chapter 6. It is the Spirit that makes alive. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are zoe. They are spirit and they are the life of God. Glory to God. Man, that excites me just to just to go through that. Now go back to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs 4, verse 20. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them, my sayings, my word, let them not depart from your eyes Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those that find them and health or medicine to all their flesh. So can you see where the life is? The life is in God, yes, but in the beginning was the Word. I'm talking about the Gospel of John now, first verse in the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word. 
the Word was with God, and the Word was God, the same in the beginning with God, and not anything was made without Him. And you go down just a few verses down and it said, and the Word became flesh, talking about Jesus, and dwelt among us. Amen. Now then, that Word then is the source of life. Let's go back now where we were in, well, this time let's go to, to Mark's Gospel, chapter 5. We were reading it in the book of Luke, and we'll, we will go over there. But Mark chapter 5, and um, look at, well, let's read, begin reading with uh, verse 20. He, Jesus, departed and began to publish in Decapolis, or, or the ten cities uh, in, in that region, how great things Jesus had done for him, and all did men did marvel. Now that's talking about the madman of Gadara. You remember that? The man that was living in the tombs and cutting himself and, and all of that. And, and he, the, those devils in that man ran out there to meet Jesus. I mean, it, they weren't running out there to worship him. They were running out there to attack him. But then Jesus said, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And man, he fell on his face in front of him. And then now there he sits clean in his right mind. What did that? Words. Words. Those devils had to listen to words. They could not give two cents for all the psychology you can come up with. They'll monkey with you. They'll play games with you. And you, you fooling around with all this psychology and, 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 and all of that. They'll monkey and mess around with you. You think you're getting somewhere and they didn't make a fool out of you. They, they'll manipulate you big time. But when you know God and you listen to what he said, I was... Uh, there was a pastor friend of mine called me a number of years ago. He said, Brother Kenneth, I need your help, man. I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm bad right now. I said, well, yeah, he lived there in town, and, and, and I, was, I was in town for a couple of days. And he said, you know, my, my wife has had epileptic seizures from time to time. He said, we've, we've, we've always had to deal with this. Now, this was back when they could come pick you up and, and just confine you to a psychiatric ward. Back in the day, this was in the uh, 70s. He said, somebody said, my wife went out in the yard and she had a seizure in the front yard. And, and one of the neighbors called and had her pick it up. They came out there and got her, and he said, Brother Copeland, they put her in the Section 8 ward at the county hospital. He said, can you get her out? I said, I'll inquire of the Lord, and I'll do whatever he says to do. And I did, and the Lord said, go down there and get her out. Well, I'd never been down there. I didn't know what that Section 8 ward looked like. But I, on the way down there, I'm telling you, the anointing of God came on me. And it just got stronger and bolder and bolder and stronger. And by the time I got down there at that hospital, it had a great big brass door. That thing was about, I was about 10 feet tall there. And going into that, that ward, and if you've never experienced, if you've never, never been under that kind of anointing, you need to, you, you, you need to put yourself in, in position from time to time to get under it. Seek the Lord. Find out what he'd have you do. And, and don't, don't be afraid to go do things under the power of God. Now, you don't just be running around butting your head into places where it don't belong. But when God tells you to go, go. Don't argue, go. And because uh, we found out last night and this morning that the enemy of faith is fear. Anyway, 
<clears throat> I walked in there and I didn't go to the desk and ask me, I talk to sister. I just walked in there and walked up to that door and got up there to it. And there was a, you know, there was a, a, an officer standing there. I said, oh, that door. He said, oh yeah. <laughs> he just opened it up. And when he opened it up, man, all these people come gathering out there and the aisle. there's some strange looking folks in there. <laughs> but this, this wasn't my first time to be in, in that kind of environment. So I mean to tell you, doctor, they was the biggest, the blackest man I have ever seen in my whole entire life up to that time. I met one later that was a little uglier than him, but <laughs> up until then, this is him right here. And he got on, he, now y'all ain't country enough to know what big Smith overhauls are. Some of you, some, some of you do. Amen. Well, he had on a pair of big Smiths. No shirt, just them big overalls. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And he's standing there. <laughs> and I walked in there and uh, I expect he's probably that much taller than me. <sighs> and I would, I'd truthfully estimate him somewhere about 285 pounds or something in that neighborhood. <laughs> big boy. And he's standing there looking at me. <laughs> well, with the power of God on you, you don't pay attention to something like that. I said, get out of the way. Because see, the man's not my enemy. The scripture said flesh and blood's not your enemy. It's that spirit that's, that's driving and he just jumped out of the way. And I started back in there and I, and I heard pastor's wife, Brother Copeland, Brother Copeland, is that you? Is that you? Is that you? I went in that room, bless her heart. Oh, she said, Brother Copeland, oh, Brother Copeland, I'm so glad you're, and had a seizure right in, just right in front of me. I said, no, you don't, Satan, in the name of Jesus. You come out of her right now. And she just snapped around. And she stood up, oh, oh, Brother Copeland, that thing's gone. Glory to God. Well, there was another, there was another young woman in there in, the, in that same room, a little bit younger than, than the pastor's wife. And she said, mister, can you do that for me? I want to be free. I said, sure. So sister and I cast the devil out of her. I was preaching. <laughs> I was in the West Indies in um, Jamaica. <laughs> oh, brother. And we were on the way to the service. I was up in the mountains. I, I had preached a couple of days in Spanish town and in, in church there. But we went on up in the mountains. And this is back again in the 70s. And I was the first light-skinned man that uh, many of these people had ever seen. But they'd been praying and fasting a day and a week to, for God to send somebody in there to teach them revelation knowledge from the scripture. Well, the Lord sent me in there. Well, the pastor picked me up that evening to take me over to the, uh, the service. And we're up there in the mountains and it, it, the roads are almost non-existent mm -hmm. and we're banging around up there on those old roads. He said, could we stop and pray for a lady on the way to the church? I said, sure. So we stopped. We got out of the car and I stepped out, of course, on that side. He walked around here and he said, oh, by the way, she's mad. <laughs> I said, what? He said, she's mad. I said, what do you mean, Matt? He said, she's crazy. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh me, we walked in that house. 
Now we're up there in the mountains, man, there ain't no electricity, there ain't nothing in there. And it's almost dark. And we walking in and I'm, I'm looking for the crazy woman. <laughs> And I, I'm, I'm walking in there with him. He knows these people. He pastors in there, you know. And I'm following him. I passed three already that I thought was her. <laughs> and we ain't found her yet. <laughs> oh, I'm, 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 I'm not kidding you now. <laughs> we walked in there. Oh, brother. I mean, it, I mean it, it looked like some kind of Halloween house, man. <laughs> well, it, it, if you've never been in a place like that, you, you, you sense those devils. And, and you, you, can, you, you can tell when you walk into it. It's oppressive when you walk in it. I've, back during the days of the USSR, the Soviet Union, and you'd cross the border and go into those countries, you could tell when you cross the line. You could tell in an airplane, you could tell when you fly across that border, the pressure hits you. Thank God that thing's not there anymore. It isn't there. Isn't that good? Well, I walked in there and finally got back to the room where she was. Well, the pastor and me and one other fellow walked in there. This little woman was squatted in a bed and she'd been in that bed for 18 years. And she had a little stick about that long with a bandana tied up like a knapsack. And she had some trinkets and stuff inside that handkerchief. And, and it was in the bed with her. And she squatted down in that bed. We walked in there. <laughs> she looked at the pastor and she said, you must be Brother Weber. He said, no. Back in those days, Brother Weber was on the radio in the United States. Mm -hmm. And she looked at this other fellow that was with me and she said, you must be Oral Roberts. <laughs> he said, no, ma'am. She turned around and looked at me. See, she's not doing the talking. She said, I know who you are. And you're afraid of anything that's not flesh and blood. I said, you're a liar in the name of Jesus. I fear no devil or no man. And you come out of her right now. Man, she folded up and, and, and she, she looked back up there at me again. Well, now all the time I'm, I'm listening to the Lord here. You don't be just running off at the mouth. Jesus said, I only say what I hear my father say. Amen. Amen. So I just stood there at attention. And she wouldn't look at me. She'd roll her eyes back around like that. And she raised up there again. And I heard the word of the Lord. I said, sweetheart, Jesus loves you. She dropped like somebody shot her. She just hit that bed. And she kind of staggered around there a little bit, fell in that bed, and she come back up there again. I said, he loves you, darling. He sent me to tell you that he loves you. I said, now devil, you're gonna have to leave her right now. She's not your property. She belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. You take your hands off of her right now. Come to find out 18 years before, there was a revival meeting going on in that area. She wanted to go to that meeting. And she got so excited, she got, she came up to get, to accept Jesus as her Lord and Savior and did and was so excited about it. Oh, she was so thrilled. And so she was going to come back Sunday. And so she went to the, she went to the beauty shop and got all fixed up and had her hair trimmed up a little bit. And, got, and, and, and she came back to the church on Sunday. She was so excited. They wouldn't let her in because she cut her hair. No, no, you can't come to church. Women can't cut their hair. You can't come to church. And she had some polish on her fingers. You're not bringing that in here. It broke her heart. 
She didn't know any better. And she went back home. She got despondent over that. Now see, when you get despondent and when you get into depression, you open the door with, into your, your mind, into those spirits. That's the reason those things will lead you, they'll lead you to suicide if you don't do something about it. I've been through depression like that. I know what I'm talking about. But if you would take authority over it in the name of Jesus, you'd be surprised. See, all of those things are fear-based. That's, that's what I'm getting to here. Now, she, she just got worse and worse and worse and worse until those spirits were able to completely take her over, take over her mind. Well, now I understood after I found out what the story was, why God said, tell her I love her. Yeah. And that broke that thing. It, it broke its power. It, didn't, it no longer had any, uh, any effect on it. Now, it took a while for her to, to get in the Word and and develop and come out of there. Now, all, all doubt, all depression, all unbelief, all of it is fear-based. Now remember, fear and faith function in the same spiritual environment because fear was originally Adam's faith before he sinned. You remember what happened then after Adam fell and God came into that garden? What, what did Adam do? He ran off. He hid out. See what had happened? He, he, dis, he was disconnected from God. Now he's connected to Satan, who is the spirit of fear. Satan is the one that caused that. Well, actually, the man caused it. The woman was deceived, but the scripture said the man wasn't. He did it with his eyes wide open and then tried to blame it on God and blame it on his wife. So now he ran from God. Now here, listen carefully now. Remember, we studied this. All socialism all of it, socialism is man trying to meet his own needs without God. And he can't do it. But he tries. Now, the first act of that was in the Garden of Eden. The very first thing that Adam tried to do was clothe himself. Huh? He was clothed with the glory of God from the inside out. He'd never seen his naked body until the light went out. And it scared him, frightened him. He, 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 didn't, he didn't know what he's looking at, man. I mean, he never saw anything like this. He had the same glory on him as on God. God called him and, and crowned him with his glory, called him blessed and fruitful and multiplied and so forth. Now, here he is afraid now. So what does he do? <laughs> the scripture says the man sowed. He ain't never sown nothing in his life. He don't know, he don't know sick him from come home, man. I mean, he, he don't know anything. He sowed clothes out of fig leaves. Here he comes to God in his little fig leaf soup. <laughs> don't you know that dumbest looking thing you ever saw in all your life? Here's a fella, don't, I mean, he don't know what he's doing. And he showed him a fig leaf soup. I, 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 I just see God saying, oh, God. <laughs> he said, And he said, come here, boy. My, my, my. And look what God did. See, God killed an animal. The first covenant was made between God and this fallen man who is now disconnected from God, but now he's connected to the devil. But God made covenant and reconnected him in order to supply him. And he made him clothes out of the fur of that animal in whose blood that covenant was made. Now, wouldn't you like to have that suit? 
<laughs> oh yeah. If, had God hand make you an ermine suit, son, you gotta be some kind of good looking. Don't you know mama was good looking? Oh yeah, Mama E was, she was shining, Bubba. Because <laughs> God made her clothes. He made the woman, then he made the clothes for her. So now you see the process. And it has followed that all down through the centuries. Man trying to meet his own need, and by covenant, God coming back in and offering the man his services to meet his needs, to get that blessing back. Jesus came and this last covenant, the new covenant, was made in his blood. Oh, yes. Amen. 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 Glory. Oh, I love it. Hallelujah. Now then, fear connects with death and holds to it, drawing from the spirit of death, that is the devil, faith in God and fear are both faith. Fear is faith in death. The fear of death is faith in death and its, and its power to hurt you and do you great harm. Faith in God is faith in his life. Now you can see why the two of them are going to butt heads somewhere. They're, they're, both, they're both faith. One of them running in one direction, one of them running in the other. One of them's going towards God and the other one's going towards People think it's going towards death. It isn't going through, towards the devil. Because at one time he had the power of death. He doesn't have it anymore. Jesus took it away from him. We're going to look at those scriptures. Now then, fear connects with death and holds to it drawing from the spirit of death or drawing from Satan who is the, the, the spirit of death. He's, the spirit, he's called the spirit of fear. Faith connects with life and holds to it, drawing from the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Now, can you see the two kingdoms? Let's go over there at the eighth chapter of Romans and look at it. Romans chapter eight, verse one. There is therefore now, say now, now, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit, who walk not after their five physical senses, but they walk after the spirit, or in other words, they walk after the word of God. Amen. So my five physical sense gates contact this natural physical world and give me information. But that information is not the truth. That's fact. The truth, the word of God says, by his stripes ye were healed. My physical body said, no, I'm not, I'm sick. Now you've got a choice. You can believe either one. Well, I don't see how you can believe something other than when you, you know good and well, you're sick. I mean, your nose is running, your ears are running, you, and you're sneezing and coughing and blowing, you stand out telling me, you, you must be lying about it. No, I'm not lying about it. I'm not speaking my own words to you. I am speaking the word of God to you. Jesus said in the 14th chapter of John, the words that I speak unto you are not my own. It's the Father that dwells within me. He does the work. Jesus spoke God's word. God gave him his spirit without measure. Well, the same thing's available to us. We're going to see this here in just a moment. Now, so what do I do? I take God's word, put it in my eyes, put it in my ears, put it in my mouth, put it in my heart. 
By his stripes ye were healed. Ye means me. So faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Fear comes by hearing and hearing by the lies of the devil. The devil comes along and says, you're not healed. Why don't you feel and see? You're not healed. See that on your arm? You're not healed. I can can plainly see you're not healed. No, that's a fact. That's not the truth. But if I'll stay with the truth, I put the truth in my mouth and I begin to say that, faith comes. If I keep listening to the devil, fear comes. But I keep listening to the, the Word of God. I keep speaking the Word of God and it's going to start building up in there. And I keep saying, my Father loves me. In perfected love, the Scripture said, casteth out fear. My Father loves me. He loves me just as much as He does Jesus. Jesus said so in the 17th chapter of John. God loves me. He loves glory. He loves my family. Glory to God. And I love Him. And every time I say this, love is building and He gets to a place for fear ain't got no more room. That's the reason it said it casts it out. Amen. Now that's what had happened to me in that section eight ward down there. That's what happened to me in that, that, those people's house in the West Indies. And I, and, and I could go on and on and on. When the, 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 the faith of God rises up on the inside of you and the love of God begins to develop. First John, the fourth chapter said, he that fears is not uh, developed in love. Well, what develops love? Keeping the word. 1 John 2, 5. Whoso keepeth the word of God in him is the love of God perfected. Amen. He who confesses Jesus dwells in God and God dwells in him. Well, God is love. 1 John 4 makes that statement. God is love. And perfected love casts out fear. And that can come up in you so strong. Uh, The the night that they diagnosed um, my granddaughter, Lindsay, when she was 11, with Nicerian meningitis, Kelly, my daughter, said, Daddy, that, when they told me what that, that, that she wasn't going to live, she said, that thing came down on me like a black, dark cloud. She said, it was heavy and it was, it was oppressive and hard. Now, t- Terry said, her older sister said, Kelly just turned and she just deliberately walked up to Terry and she said, I refuse to fear. Kelly said, Daddy, when I said that, that thing just poop. She said, I was amazed at how weak it was. (laughs) See, when she refused to fear, well, that thing's gone. I mean, without any fear, that thing doesn't have any handle on you. That's the spirit of torment. Perfected love casteth out fear because fear hath torment, Scripture says. The torment's in the fear. Amen. And the tormentor, who is the devil, the Scripture says, calls him the tormentor to torment you. Doubt will torment you. Unbelief will torment you. You'll read something in the Scripture and you start saying, yeah, but, yeah, but, you know, oh, yeah, but I don't, I, yeah, I just can't see, and just torment you, just drive you and torment you. I know that works for you, Brother Copeland, but you see, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to be rehearsing that doubt and unbelief. Come back at it. Rise up and come back at it. Say this, my mind is my mind. Nobody, the devil included, can make me think something I don't want to think. Or make me say something I refuse to say. Or make me do something I refuse to do. I'm a believer. I'm not a doubter. My mind is my mind. Glory to God. You get dangerous when you start talking like that. Devil don't want to have nothing to do with you. 
You will rack his stuff back. You can set him back for years. Mess up something he'd been working on for 20 years. Mess it up in 20 seconds. He don't want nothing to do with you. There'll be times he may come at you because that's his job. And he's self-employed, you know. He <laughs> thinks he has to do that. And, and he'll come at you, but you just, whoop. oh yeah, oh, okay. That's right. You're a liar and a father of it. That's what Jesus said to him. Amen. The scripture said, you resist him, he'll flee. I refuse to fear. Say it. I refuse to fear. I refuse to be tormented. I refuse to be tormented. I'm a believer. I'm not a doubter. Now then, let's go now. Well, we need to go ahead and finish reading this eighth chapter of Romans before we leave this. Verse two, for the law... Read it out loud with me. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus made me free from the law of sin and death. Now, when Jairus, we, you remember we read that last night? Jairus fell at the feet of Jesus, said, my little daughter lies at home sick, dying. Come lay your hands on her and she'll live. Now, what was he after? He's after the Zoe, the life of God that's in Jesus. So then on the way, the woman with the issue of blood touched the hem of Jesus' garment and he stopped and said, who touched me? They said, what do you mean who touched you? He said, virtue or zoe. Actually, the word here is dunamis, anointing, power of God. The father that dwells within, he does the work, flowed out of him. Well, see, Jesus, Jesus didn't have anything to do with it flowing. It wasn't his faith that did it. It wasn't his word that did it. The scripture said, for she heard of Jesus came in the press behind, for she said, it's what she said, by faith, touched his garment, pulled the power out of him. I've had it happen to me. Some of you have had it happen to you. Amen. It ought to be happening to every one of you all the time. And it will if you'll just continue to flow in this and listen to God, be obedient to him. You're in the grocery store, he says you go pray for somebody, go do it. Don't start whining around, I'm not qualified. You are too, you just got qualified. He told you to do it. If he told you to do something, you got authorized. And you agree, then you got empowered. I was in a, <laughs> I was in a Home Depot store. And I just took Gloria down there. She's looking for something in the, in the Home Depot store. And I'm just wandering around through the store, you know, just looking at the hardware and stuff. And I like tools and all that kind of stuff. I'm just roaming around in there. And there was a, a fellow working in there. And uh, the Lord said, uh, I want you to speak to him. I said, okay. And I went over there and introduced myself to him. And he's a very nice gentleman. And he said, yeah, Brother Copeland, I know who you are. And so we talked there for a few minutes and, and uh, enjoyed one of those company. And he's, he know the Lord. And we stood there for a little while. And uh, so I've, I went on about my business. And the Lord said, uh, you, you, didn't, you didn't listen to me long enough to find out what I'm telling you to do. I want you to go back in there and I want you to give him a hundred dollars. I said, okay. So I went back in there and I, I found him. I had to hunt around in there to, to find him. And I called him over there. I said, the word of the Lord come to me, brother, to bring you a hundred dollars. And I took his hand and slapped it in there. And tears started running down his cheeks. He said, brother Copeland, I'm a backslid Pentecostal preacher. And he said, I got mad at other preachers that stole money out of my ministry. And he said, I, that's the reason I'm not in the ministry today. He said, I, I love God. He said, I ain't backslid from God. But he said, I, I'm, I'm not preaching in a, and I should be. I said, yeah, you should be, you need to be. And so we prayed, believe God together. That man today 
is one of the most faithful men that I have ever met in my life. What happened to him? He said, the anointing of God came on him because the Spirit of God used me to love him. And I hugged him up and loved him, brought that $100 and put it in his hand. And this is back when $100 was worth more than about eight ninety five, you know, like this. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, and, and, whoa, and, and well, it was, it, that'd be like $2,500 now. And so, and man, somebody loved him. And I, and I told him, I said, Larry Joe, let, let me tell you something, bud. I said, God ain't hot at you. He's not mad at you. He's not put out with you. I said, he loves you, man. Let's get on back into business here. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't last in that store. But I don't remember now what it was, two or three days. Man, he quit and here he come. I'm going right on back in there and did. Glory to God. And he's a member of EMIC today and one of the most faithful preachers of the gospel I have ever met in my life. Amen. Well, can, can you see, if I hadn't obeyed, if I said, you know, Lord, I didn't, I, I, no, I can't, yeah, yeah, I, you know, I can't do that. I'm preaching a meeting in a casino in Las Vegas. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> oh, brother, we was having a good time. Dear God, the, the casino owner, hotel and casino owner, any, any of you guys old enough to remember C.C. Ryder? Huh? Yeah. Some of you other old guys, you, <laughs> you remember Wayne Cochran was old CC rider. Well, Wayne got born again and filled with the Holy Ghost and passing in a church down in South Florida. Big time rock and roll singer. I'm talking about big time. And he was, he was, he was the, the top show in Las Vegas for years. And then he went back and got the owner of that casino born again. Well, then the casino owner called him and said, Wayne, I got to do something for God. What can I do? This is back in the old days, man. You know, Vegas. <laughs> anyway, he said, what can I do? He said, uh, Wayne, I, I, I'd like to hold a meeting. He said, you think Brother Copeland would come here and preach in this casino? Wayne said, I know he will. So Wayne called me and said, you come preach a meeting in this casino? I said, what time do it open? <laughs> hey, man. So we went in there. Now, the, we had our whole, back in those days, we had our, our whole band with us now, the whole thing. And so uh, I'm standing back behind the curtain waiting for it to be 7.30, you know, before I can walk out on that curtain. And we're in, in one of the, the uh, rooms, one of the, the show rooms. <laughs> I'm staying there back and the curtain opened up right behind me and it's a blackjack dealer. <laughs> and he got a little, a little bow tie hooked to his coin and he stuck his head around that, in that coin. He said, Brother Copeland, he said, I, I'm, 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 I'm working on the floor tonight. And he said, I can't be in the meeting, but I, I just wanted to tell you, me and them other blackjack dealers, we're praying for you, brother. My <laughs> God, we're praying for you. And the problem of it was back in them days, the churches wouldn't let those people come to church. Anyway, so <laughs> I said all that to, to give you the, the situation. Well, I'm walking through that casino and the Lord said, I want you to witness to that, those two people right there. I don't know who they are. And I'm, uh, you know, I'm right out in the middle of, a, of the hotel and the casino's the, the, right through there. So I just walked up this fellow. I said, you know, I, I'm, uh, I'm a preacher and I, I know that, and I believe that I heard God say to me that I'm supposed to tell you about Jesus and that he loves you and that I'm here to pray with, they, they looked at me like I just come out from under the bus. You know, like, what? And, and I don't even remember now what they said. So I'm like, yeah, well, thank you anyway. And turned around and walked off. I said, Lord, <laughs> about this time, 
<laughs> oh, dear Lord. About this time, this fellow said, <laughs> you preacher? <laughs> I said, yes, I am. He said, I, I, I heard what you said to them other people. <laughs> He said, can I talk to you? I said, yeah, he said, come on in, come on in the restroom here. Yeah, I want to talk to you. So we went in the men's room. <laughs> we got in there and he said, I want you to know, I believe everything you said. <laughs> Every word of The word of the living God. He said, I know, I know, I'm a backslid Baptist preacher. Can you help me get back to God? That is worth the trip to Las Vegas right there. We preached in Las Vegas for two, uh, two, two and a half weeks, whatever it was. We had meetings two or three times, two times a day. That is worth the whole thing. Man, I just, all I did was quote the scripture to him in 1 John 1 9. And, and he quoted it right after me. And I just obeyed the Lord. And I just slapped both of his jaws in the name of Jesus by the Lord God Almighty. And he raised up just sober as a rock. He said, preacher, you pray for me. I'm going back into ministry tonight. Religion has been waiting all these years for somebody else to go do that. You can do it. You don't have to be a preacher. All you have to be is obedient. God will come here using you out in public like that, then he will me. Why? Because you're the public. Jerry Savelle went with Carolyn. Uh, Carolyn and Gloria Copeland can go through a shopping center. I'm telling you, man, I mean, <laughs> I think they go. And it's best, best, best that Jerry and me just go out there and sit down. Now we can't keep up with them. And so Jerry's in there with Carolyn. Carolyn's just going through the place. And so Jerry just kind of walking around, you know, trying to keep an eye on front, see where she's going to come out. And he just walking around. And there's a woman run up there to him and, and said, my God, my God, man, pray for me now. He said, okay. <laughs> and he just put his hands on her and prayed. Oh, glory to God, she said. She starts jumping around and praising God. She said, I'm healed. I'm healed in the name of Jesus. She said, I was praying. And the Lord told me to come to this shopping center and that, that I would know who's supposed to pray for me. And she said, I've been seeing this light bob up and down all through this whole place, through this shopping center. And she said, it, I found out the light is on you. It's on top of your head. Folks, this is life. Yes. See? Not walking by sight. Not walking in the carnal realm. But what did that say? Go back and look at it again. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Made me free from the law of sin and death. Now, let's go over then to the book of Hebrews. And I'll begin winding this down, I think. <laughs> so I enjoy this more than anybody. I learn more out of it than anybody. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. I do enjoy what I do. Hebrews chapter 2.
And let's look at verse 14. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he, Jesus, also himself likewise took part of the same. Now notice this sentence here. So that through death, this is talking about when he went to the cross now, he might destroy him. That word in the, in the excuse me, in the, in the original text, translated destroy, means to render completely helpless, to paralyze, paralyze him. To paralyze him that had, past tense, had the power of death, that is the devil. He doesn't have it anymore. Jesus stripped him of it. See, Jesus went to hell so you and I don't have to go. He went to hell and suffered there for three days and nights. That's what, the, that's, what the, that, that's what the death on the cross was all about. He went into hell and suffered Adam's price for his sin. Broke hell's power over human beings made it available for every living man and woman from that day forward has a free choice to choose him as Lord and Savior and walk away from it a free man and a free woman. But it's your choice now. He ain't going to force it on you. You can go to hell if you want to. You ain't got good sense if you do, but, but you, you can if, you, if you'd like. But now notice this and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. If you're afraid of death, then Satan can threaten you. He's holding something over you if he can threaten you with death. But when you know Jesus and you understand when you accepted him as Lord and Savior. Now, look, look in the second chapter at the ninth verse. But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. See, Jesus did that for every human being alive then and every human being born of a woman since then. It is there, it, it, but you, and it, it takes faith in the gospel accepting Jesus to activate it because he's not going to force it on anybody. The scripture said through one man's offense, death reigned. Death came on every human being after Adam did what he did. Isn't that right? You know anybody, there wasn't enough death to go around. No, sir. no. Satan demanded every man die. And he took command of the earth from, from Adam. But then when the scripture said, but through one man's obedience, righteousness has come upon all men. And they which receive the free gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Now there's the difference between God and Satan. Satan demanded that every man die. God demanded that every man have a choice. That's the way he is. That's him. Well, when you receive Jesus, you receive the free gift of righteousness. You activate the righteousness of God and the force of that righteousness cause your inner man to be recreated in Christ Jesus. You're not just a forgiven sinner. I mean, you're, you're a spirit being. This physical body, that ain't you. That doesn't define you. That's the house you live in. Amen. Now, Jesus tasted death for all men. The moment you made him the Lord of your life, see, taste represents five physical senses. So death is no threat anymore. 
Look at 1 Corinthians. <coughs> Go to the 15th chapter. Verse 50, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither does corruption inher inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruption shall have put on incorruption, this mortal have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The grave don't mean a thing in the world to you and me. Life goes on. You'll never know it when you die. You can't taste it. You can't see it. You can't feel it. You can't smell it. And you can't hear it. Jesus saw to that. Now, if you'll develop it, perfected love will cast the fear of it out. Because Jesus defeated it. Death has been defeated. And Satan has, has lost the power over death. He can threaten you with it, but he can't kill you. Not unless you allow it. He didn't have any right and authority over you unless you give it to him. Now, the way you give it to him is listening to him and talking fear. But just tell him, no, 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 no. You're a liar and a father of it. I don't care if your knees are knocking together. And your hair is changing color. It'll come back. <laughs> Amen. But now I can tell you this. It, it ain't going to do any good for you to stand in the mirror and look at it like that and say, damn, my hair's coming out. <laughs> That's the way the world talks. So when I'm, their hair fall out in the sink. Well, yeah, Brother Copeland, that's just natural. I know. We're not natural. We're supernatural. Amen. Jesus said every hair on your head is numbered. Amen. Well, I want my original count. Amen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Amen. Instead of that, you roll all the cows. I said, Lord, you want a bald-headed preacher? You want a gray-headed preacher? What way you want? I'm yours to command. You choose. I have no fear of my hair falling out. I don't care. I rolled all the care of it over on it. I could care less what it looked like. <laughs> I rolled that care over on him. My hair does not refine me. My sex life don't define me. You are what you are because you became that. You can take the Word of God and change it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Woo, I don't preach me happy glory to God. Hallelujah. And the Word of the Lord came to me. He said, say this, hair grow dark brown. Hair be alive. Hair be thick. So I said that. And then he said, say, thus saith the Lord. <laughs> well, I'll be 77 the first week of next month. It'll look pretty good, don't it? <laughs> now, hey, uh-uh. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Listen to me. It ain't me. It's the grace of God. It is the grace of God. I said, it's the grace of God. God grow hair on a billiard ball. If somebody got any faith, he'll grow your hair back. But he ain't going to grow it back. And you stand there looking at it and say, oh, oh, oh. No, 
the fear will keep you in the same shape you're in. So it's not getting the hair back, it's getting rid of the fear and begin to walk by faith because you don't care whether you got hair or not. Hair don't mean nothing, praise God. You need to get to where you do, you don't have to shave a little further than you used to. <laughs> but who cares? I have no care about that. You roll all the care of it over on him and he will do what? He will take care of you. I didn't intend to preach that tonight, but I'm glad I did. I need to hear it. <laughs> Glory. Glory to God. Yes, amen. So death, where is your sting? Go with me to 1 John. 1 John chapter 4. Verse 15, whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwells in him and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love, and he that dwells in love dwells in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect or developed, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love. Perfected love casteth out fear because fear hath torment and he that fears is not made perfect in love. Amen. Ah, now you know what your job is. Now you know how to fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life that is in Christ Jesus. Amen. You stand up and tell fear exactly where it can go and it can leave and it'll never come back to me again. Faith worketh by love and perfected love filling up faith comes against that fear. It got to go. Don't be moved by what you feel. I don't care. Like I said a while ago, your knees are knocking. Amen. No, no. Take authority. See? Take authority. The devil can't threaten you with death. As far as God's concerned, you already died. You died the death of the cross along with the Christ Jesus when you made him Lord of your life. Because, I mean, dying ain't no different than that. See, that, that's, that's just my clothes. That coat was made for me but I have to be in it for it to live. The scripture calls your body a tabernacle, clothes, spiritual clothes. Amen. I didn't feel a thing when I pulled that coat off. Didn't feel no different than I did now. But now the coat's alive. <laughs> but now, let me, let me show you something. Come here. <laughs> hey, come on. In the name of the Lord Jesus. <laughs> Ain't nobody in there. Don't get all disturbed and grieved and tore up when one of your loved ones goes to heaven. God, I was reading Brother Terry Mize's partner letter the other day. He said, no, ain't, ain't we something? I mean, we preach all these years trying to get somebody to go to heaven. One of us dies and we get mad about it. <laughs> no, 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 no. Amen. No, this is life. It's not life and death. It's, it's just life. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, did you get anything out of this tonight? Give the Lord praise and thanksgiving. Give him praise. Give him honor. Give him glory. We have the victory over death. Amen. Good friend of mine was an old motorcycle outlaw years ago and 
And, <laughs> oh, man, he hadn't been saved long. He, he accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. I mean, he's mainline here of an addict. And, and, it, and God really got, got through to him. And, <laughs> and um, there's a, another guy with another outlaw club stuck a shotgun in his face. And Ben said, whoa, pull the trigger. I pull the trigger, man, glory to God. The next face I'll see is the Lord Jesus Christ. Pull it, Jack, pull it, glory to God. Get me out of here, pull the trigger. <laughs> he said, oh, Ben, I didn't know his soul. I, I didn't know his real. I was hoping it was real. Oh, he said, pray for me, pray for me, pray. I want this Jesus for my life. He didn't come out of church. He hadn't been taught all his life, all that monkey motion, religion. The reason religion don't, you know why you have to memorize theology and doctrine? Because it don't work. You don't have to memorize stuff that works. You just live it. My dad told me one time, he said, Ken, if I found out there wasn't any God and that Jesus never, never had been, I'd still live this way because it works. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But truth works. Amen. And it works all the time, every time when it's put to work. Yes. And when you think about it, fear always works. It works every time when you put it to work. The thing of it is the natural world don't know anything else and they don't know what's killing them. So they talk fear, live fear. God said, I, I call heaven and earth the record before you this day that I place before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, you choose life. You choose Zoe that you and your seed after you may live. You cling to God that you may love the Lord your God and I will be your life and I'll be the length of your days. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You better stand up, I can't quit. Yeah. <laughs> glory, 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 I said. Come on, give the Lord praise and thanksgiving. Glory, 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 glory. <laughs> glory, 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 glory. Father, I pray for every person in the sound of my voice, every person on the God channel, every person on the internet, every person in this room, every person that will listen to the CDs and watch the DVDs of these meetings in the future. I pray for them all as they are making decisions, sir, decisions concerning you, decisions in, 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 in reaction and response to your word. You said, if any man will, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice and open, I will come in. I will sup with him. I'll be Lord to him. Glory to God. Thank you, sir. I remember in your word, Lord Jesus, you said, anyone that comes to me, I will in no wise cast him out. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank God for that. If that hadn't been true, I'd have died and gone to hell. I found in your word where you said you died for the ungodly. And I realized I qualified. Now thank you for it. Oh, do I thank you for it. Yes.